Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the 3 by the Sea Designs podcast. My name is Kim and I'm part of the team with my mom, Trima, and my sister, Becky. We have an Etsy shop where we sell our project bags, stitch markers, and hand-dyed yarn. And this podcast is mostly about our shop, things that we're working on, also things that I am knitting or crocheting, and the progress with, you know, my crafting journey. So thanks for joining me. I'm excited to share some things with you guys that we have coming up. And also I have quite a few knitting and crochet related items to show you as well. So thanks for taking the time to sit down and watch this episode. Uh, and thank you for being a subscriber and for uh, liking all of the videos and just being a part of our little community that we have here. I just wanted you all to know how much that I appreciate each and every one of you. So today is Friday, March 3rd, and I'm sitting in a different space today because the dye studio where I normally film is uh, crazy right now because there's yarn everywhere. We're getting ready for our spring collection and I didn't want to spoil anything. I'll do a reveal next week. I'll talk more about that later, but uh, I didn't want to spoil anything before the reveal. So I thought I'd come out here and sit in front of the area where we keep all of our yarn that's already been dyed and um, like this shelf is where all of the stitch markers are that we have. Let's see if I can move this without it being too crazy. So that's the shelf that I keep all of the things that we use to make our stitch markers. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of this yarn. As you can see, we don't have a lot in stock right now, but uh, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So I do have a little bit of shop news to share with you. There's not a whole lot, but I do have a couple of things that I wanted to mention to you. Um, I have a couple of finished objects, including what I'm wearing. I'll talk about that. Um, I have a couple of works in progress and I have some future plans that um, are going to be immediate cast-ons in the next couple of weeks. And I have a couple of acquisitions today as well. So there's quite a few things to get to. Okay, so before I talk shop, I want to show you guys my first finished object, which is my Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. I'll stand up in a second and show it to you. Um, this I started back in December. And if you're a long time viewer, you know that this yarn uh, was originally something that I was using for um, a different garment. I was making the Radvent cardigan and I just didn't, it wasn't working for it. I got like over halfway done and I was like, no, I frogged the entire thing. It was a big thing for me. And um, I, I wanted to make the love note. I'd been wanting to make it for a while and this yarn was just perfect for this project. So I'm so excited that it's finally finished, washed, blocked, ends are woven in and I can finally wear it. Uh, so I'll stand up and show it to you now and then I'll talk about some more details with it. So I made it very oversized. I wanted it to be baggy and just a comfy, like cozy sweater. You knit it top down and it has this beautiful lace work on the yoke. And um, what else did I do? Uh, the, the, the back is longer than the front, as you can see which is great because it covers my bum, which I love that. And uh, I am wearing a um, shirt underneath it, just a plain t-shirt in like a light sort of lavender-y purple color that's extremely light. So uh, because the lace work is very open and so you definitely need to wear something underneath it, but I just love it.
Here's some detail on the sleeve. So let me talk about it in some detail. Okay, so the yarn that I used is a, is a yarn uh, that I dyed a couple of years ago. It's this really pretty pinky color. The base that I used was an 80-20, so it was 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and I held it double with a Surrey Alpaca silk blend in the same colorway. I never named this or anything. It was just something that I dyed for me, for personal. So this is what I have left. I used three skeins of this, and this I used two skeins of the Surrey, and this is what I had left from them. I made the size extra large, and you use a very big needle uh, I think it's like a size 10 needle, maybe. So um, it's just very open and airy. And that's why even though I live in Florida and it's a million degrees outside, I can still wear this because it's just so light and sort of fluffy. And um, I don't feel like it's too hot to wear um, inside or outside. I would wear this out even in the Florida heat. So um, the Surrey makes it so, so soft. We actually brought this base to our shop. So we do have Surrey as one of our bases. It's a great alternative to a mohair lace yarn. If you don't like the feel of mohair, you can usually interchange them. So if you have a pattern that calls for a mohair yarn, but uh, let's say you're allergic to it or you just find it too scratchy or you don't like the feel of it, then you can swap it out for a Surrey um, lace. And this, this was, I had dyed three skeins of this, but I only used two. So I have one left over that I have plans for. I'll talk about that later. But um, Surrey is a great alternative to mohair. It's very, very, very soft but it's also fluffy and it gives your project that sort of halo look and just makes it so, so cozy. So what else can I say about this? I didn't modify the pattern in any way other than I did make the sleeves a little bit longer. I think the sleeves are supposed to be more like this. So I did make them a little bit longer to make them almost go, go down almost to my um, wrist, but I wanted them to be sort of like three quarter sleeves. And uh, so that was the only modification I made. Definitely follow the instructions if you make this. Follow the instructions for the neckline because you don't start off with the ribbing. You start off like down here and then you go back and you do the ribbing for the neckline later. I don't know why necessarily they have you do that, but in regards to the needles to use and the bind off to use for the neckline, definitely follow the instructions in the pattern um, unless you know another way of doing it because you want this part to be very, very stretchy so it fits your neck. I know some people have had issues with the neck of their sweaters. Same thing with the sleeves. You want to do something very, this is bothering me. <laughs> I have to figure out and cut that part off. But um, you definitely want to do it very stretchy um, when you bind off for the sleeves as well. So I love it. I think if I made it again, I would probably do one that's more fitting uh, maybe even a cropped one that I could wear with dresses. But for this one, I wanted it to be baggy and oversized and just to be able to throw on a pair of stretch pants or yoga pants, which is what I'm wearing now with it. <laughs> and um, just to have a comfy, cozy, oversized sweater. Um, but if I were to make it again, since I already have this one, I would probably make it a little more fitting. It just depends on what you're going for with it.
Tin Can Knits has a lot of great patterns, all different types of patterns, hats, shawls, all types of garments, gloves. Uh, she has a lot of sock patterns and I highly recommend checking out her website. Um, and she also has a lot of free patterns as well. So this is probably the third thing I've made by her because I made a pair of socks and then I made a pullover last year and now the Love Note sweater. So highly, highly recommend. I'm glad it's finally done and I get to wear it now. And you know, now that winter is pretty much over, <laughs> uh, but it's like I said, since it's so light and fluffy, um, it doesn't feel too hot to wear. I don't know if I mentioned, but this is a fingering weight yarn and you hold it double with the Surrey. So that's it for my love note. Let me talk a little bit about some shop news. Right now we have a couple of things in the shop that are on pre-order. We have our Wizard of Oz mystery sock set. It comes with a full skein of our 100 gram Sanibel base, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino nylon. And it also comes with a coordinating mini and it comes with a stitch marker progress or a progress keeper. So that is a lot of fun. This is the picture of what it looks like. And this is just an inspiration picture based uh, on our interpretation of the classic book and movie. So uh, if you're a Wizard of Oz fan, you will definitely love this. It's a fun experience to open one of our mystery sock sets, our yarn and charm sets. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. We only have a few left in the shop. Those will ship out uh, the last week of, or March 24th. So you'll get them the last week of March uh, for this month for those. We also have some other pre-orders going on in the shop. We decided to bring back some of our previous colorways that we just have not had time to restock. So we thought since we were doing a pre-order already, let's go ahead and do the pre-orders for these. So we have uh, several different colorways. I'll put them up here on the screen. We have sock sets, we have DK weight sock sets. We have uh, some of our super popular minis sets back on fingering weight as well as DK weight. We also still have the kits for the Memories of Paris cowl. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but we have three different kits that you can get, which, which come with a full skein of our Sanibel base, as well as a full skein of our Venice base, which is mohair, to make the Memories of Paris cowl. And uh, so those pre-orders will come down uh, next Friday. So you only have one more week to, to do any pre-orders for those. And then they will come down because we are going to be dyeing everything and shipping it out to you at the end of the month. So lots of things going on with the pre-orders. And you're going to get lots of fun yarn at the end of this month for sure. One colorway in particular that I wanted to show you is um, our Lily Pond colorway. And I wanted to show this one especially because it's brand new to our shop. So even though it's on a pre-order, uh, like our past colorways, this one is brand new to the shop. This is Lily Pond. And it's beautiful teals and greens and aquas. And there's some purple pinks in there as well. So many of you have taken advantage of this pre-order. It comes with, uh, you can get it as a sock set with Sugar Plum as the mini. This is Sugar Plum, just to show you an idea of how beautiful they look together. So I did want to highlight this because um, we will probably bring this back in the summertime as a regular colorway in the shop, but right now it's only available for a pre-order purchase that you would get 
in just a few weeks. So you could get um, a sweaters quantity if you wanted to. You could get it on DK, on our MCN base. Um, Surrey, this would look so pretty on Surrey, as well as our mohair. Our next big shop update will be our spring collection and that will be Saturday, March 18th. We decided to push it back a week because we wanted to make sure that we were fully prepared and ready for it. So, um, so it will not be March 11th, it will be March 18th. And next Friday, I will do a special preview video just for the update. I'll show the new yarn, the new bags, project bags, the new stitch markers that we're gonna have in the shop the following week. So that gives you a week to watch it and sort of figure out if there's anything that you'd like to order. And the update will be on the 18th in our Etsy shop. So we are so excited about this update. The yarn is gorgeous. <laughs> um, we tried to come up with a beautiful spring collection that just evokes that spring feeling, lots of beautiful color, and um, we think you're gonna love it. We hope so. And so next week I'll show you a sneak peek preview right here on a special episode. The only other thing that I wanted to show you for the shop is um, the Memories of Paris cowl pattern released last weekend. Thank you all so much for supporting my pattern adventures and for purchasing it and just loving the pattern. This is the Memories of Paris cowl. I did a special video for it last um last week so if you want to see a lot of details on this go check out the uh the last video but this pattern is available for purchase right now it's 20 percent off through i think the end of this coming of this weekend so through sunday this is the one that i um, knit in our memories of paris uh colorway with i used weathered wood as the mohair. These are available as a kit, the, the yarns, as well as the Sugar Plum and uh, Shiny Bright colorways. So there's two different ones. I have not blocked this one yet because I was waiting on something to come in the mail that will help me block it. I'll show you those in acquisitions. So this is another kit that you can purchase. That's two of them. And then the third kit was the she sells seashells with our starfish. Let me grab it. So we brought back our famous seashells. Well, not famous, but our well-loved um, for very first colorways that we ever created. So this is what a, the, a sock set would look like, but the kit will come with the mohair, the starfish on mohair, and the she sells seashells on our Sanibel base. This would make such a beautiful cowl together. And lots of you have purchased the kits already. Thank you so, so much for supporting us with that. And uh, don't forget your pre-orders because they will go down next Friday. So if there's anything you want, we don't know when these will be coming back to the shop, if there's anything you want, go grab it now. Um, and a lot of times we only put, like when we come out with a new colorway, we make mostly fingering weight uh, base because that's what most people want. But this time you can order as many as you want to on our DK weight, as well as our MCN the with the cashmere in it. And, um, Surrey, our Surrey base, as well as our mohair base. So check out the shop for that. There's lots of different options. Okay, I think that's it for shop news. I'm going to show you a few more finished objects that I have. I cannot remember if I showed these to you last time or if they were actually finished. I can't remember, so I'm just gonna briefly show them again. Our Valentine's make along ended at the end of February and um, this is our Be My Valentine Chuck colorway 
that was the um, mystery sock set for our last um, mystery, which was in February. And it came with a yellow mini. And this is the Chevron Shorties sock pattern that I released last month. It is available on our in our Etsy shop. And um, so I wanted to show it two different ways where you can put the Chevron pattern on the um, on the foot or you can put it on the leg. And I did this one second. So um, one thing I would recommend if you want the Chevron pattern on the leg is to make the leg a little bit longer. Like it probably, I mean, it's okay as a shorty with this color work section here, but when you put it on, it stretches quite a bit. So it sort of makes the, um, makes the chevron, the patterning stretch out, which is fine. But if I were to make these again, I would um, make the leg maybe like 20 rows longer just to um, give the chevron section um, a little bit more area to like, so it wouldn't stretch out as much basically is what I'm trying to say. I prefer the chevron pattern for this particular one. If I'm going to make shorties, I prefer the chevron pattern to be on the, on the let on the foot. I think it would be cute to make like long socks and put the chevron pattern up top as well as by the toe. So those are the chevron shorties in our be my Valentine Chuck colorway that was inspired by Charlie Brown. I apologize if I've already shown those and talked about that. Um, I can't remember if I showed them on Instagram or one of our Facebooks or whatever. So I wanted to make sure that I talked about it here on the, um, on the podcast. Another sort of finished object that I have is the crochet granny stripe blanket. As you can see, the ends are not woven in yet. I say sort of finished because I want to put a border around the, um, like just a single crochet border around it, probably in a white. And then I'm going to attach that minky fabric that I showed you last time with the rainbows. Um, my mom and sister are gonna help me figure out how to sew the um, fabric onto this. And um, my mom has the fabric, otherwise I would show it to you. But I showed it on one of the last couple of episodes. But the blanket for my new niece, I guess, yes, she's my grand niece, um, is pretty much finished except for the backing. So uh, she was born a few weeks ago and her name is Mila and she is just the cutest thing ever. And um, I think this will be a great gift to give to my nephew and my niece, his wife. This is just a crochet granny square blanket that you start and you just keep going with it. The yarn that I used was Mandela Sparkle and it's the color number is 313. This is how much I had left. I didn't think this would be enough to go around again. So I stopped with this and I think it'll be so cute with the, the rainbow fabric that I picked out for it. My last finished object is the Bits and Bobs blanket. I'm gonna have to stand up to show it in all of its glory, but folded up, this is what it looks like. This is a pattern by Kay Jones. And I decided I had been going back and forth. Oh, this is a good way to show it. I'd been going back and forth on, do I make it longer? Do I just make it like a lap blanket? And I decided, because there's a few other blankets that I want to cast on, which I'll talk about that in my future plans, 
but I thought this is certainly long enough. I'm very happy with it. So I, it's been on my needles for over a year. I started it, when did I start it? January of last year. So I thought it was time to finish. I have not washed it or blocked it yet. Um, I'm probably just gonna soak it and then just lay it out flat and you know give it a good soak um, i think i've got all of the ends woven in but i may have missed some <laughs> but i'm going to stand up and show you try to get a full view of it so there's not really a top or a bottom to it i guess You could even use it long ways if you wanted to, but it's just perfect. It's a perfect size for me to curl up on the couch with, and it's a great pattern. It's a great way to use up scraps, leftovers. You hold two fingering weight yarns double. So depending on what your color choices are, it gives it that very marled look which is just so fun and scrappy. You could be very intentional about your color choices or you can just make it totally scrappy, which is so fun. I haven't done any measurements of the blanket yet because I haven't soaked it and let it like lay out yet, but I did weigh it and it weighs almost 800 grams so it was like 792 grams or something so that basically means I was able to use that much of my scrap because I used all scraps so I was basically able to use eight full skeins of scraps which I think is so so fun and it's such a great way to use all of those leftover bits and bobs which is what the name of the pattern is Kay Jones has some really, really great patterns. She makes all kinds of things and I highly recommend her patterns. Oh look, I found an end to weave in. I'm sure there will be more of them. <laughs> I'll let you know finished measurements after I've soaked it and blocked it. So the last work in progress I have to show you is living in my cute summary Volkswagen bag that's beachy and surfy. This is our large size zipper bag. And um, I think we came out with this one last summer. I love this size, the large. I mean, I love all the sizes for different projects, but I really love that large size. Okay, so I'm making a third Memories of Paris cowl. And I am using our colorway Mold Wine. And I am holding the uh, mohair is our chrysanthemum colorway. These two together just make such a pretty, like sort of muted color. So because the pattern is in sections where some, some sections you hold just the main colorway uh, by itself and then the some other sections you hold the main color with the mohair you hold it double so that's what gives you that different look in the pattern so this is where i'm at so far this is the top this is that folded neck cuff and this is, so this is the first section. This is the second section. And this is where you start holding the mohair with it. And then this is the third section. That's the section that I'm on right now. This also has the mohair held with it. But it's just so, I love, ooh, I'm dropping stitches. I love how the mohair changes the look of the yarn. I mean, I think mold wine looks beautiful by itself. I love the sort of striping that it does. Mold Wine has 
uh, very beautiful muted colors like chestnuts and um, cranberry colors in it. And then the chrysanthemum is a very like purpley sort of wine color. And together they just make such a really pretty color. So this is my third Memories of Paris cowl. The, the pattern is so addicting. I don't get bored with it at all. And um, this is what everyone's getting for Christmas presents this year because I just wanna make one for everyone in my family. So that is my last whip. Now we do have chrysanthemum on pre-order. Uh, if you wanted to purchase this. And um, when I showed this on the cowl video, um, what we had left in stock of mold wine sold out. But if you are interested in mold wine and you would like to get this colorway, let me know in the comments and we can add it for this next week. We can add some pre-orders because we still have the other pre-orders in the shop so if anyone is interested in mold wine we uh, we will probably not dye that one for a while again so um let us know in the comments or send us a message on etsy that you would like to have to mold wine back in the shop and we will put it on a pre-order i made a teeny tiny little swatch of mold wine just to see what it would look like by itself. So that's everything that I'm actively working on. Um, what else do I have to show you? I'm gonna talk about some future plans and a couple of acquisitions. When I'm showing things, if I talk too much, too fast, or if I, forget to mention something that you have a question about, just uh, leave a comment and I'd be happy to answer that for you. Sometimes I forget to mention things um, or I try to be as thorough as possible, but um, all of the patterns, all of the yarn, anybody that I talk about, um, I try to link everything in the description box down below. And the description box is um, a place where it's down below this video. And if you don't know how to get to it, I'll put up a little picture here. There's like a little arrow and you tap the arrow. If you're on your phone or like a tablet, you tap the arrow and it will, um, it will open up a box where that lists out anything that the podcaster puts in there. So links to shops, links to our shop links to our Facebook page and our Instagram and our Etsy shop, all of that stuff is down below in that box. On, on If you're watching it on a TV, I have no idea how to get to this, the, the description box, um, but on a mobile device or a like a tablet, it's very easy to get to the links. And if it's something that I can link, I will link it down below. My future plans for uh, immediate casts on, cast ons, I want to make the Orchid Adventure Wrap. I'll put up a picture of it here. It is by a designer on, on Instagram. Their name is Bigger Than Life Knits, her name. She is a woman that lives in South Africa. Her name is Noma, and she makes these really, really cool patterns. Um, I have been following her for a while and been wanting to make something but I just haven't yet because of time. So, but then I saw this wrap, this uh, orchid adventure wrap, and I thought it would look really, really pretty um, with our Candy Hearts minis. So the way the pattern works is, uh, I think she wrote it to use like an advent or just to use up uh, leftovers or to you if you have a bunch of minis you can make it um as long or as wide as you want to she says that the um number of stitches you cast on determines the length of it and the number of rows 
that you do determines the width of it. So I thought um, the minis set would look really pretty with it, but I would have to, because I don't, there's only six of them, I would have to um, use another color. So I'm just gonna use our Stellina base in White Sands as a um, contrast color and I will um, stripe the minis and in between the, the stripes, I will, um, I will use this. So I thought that would be fun and a nice springy um, wrap to have. And uh, the Candy Hearts mini sets are on pre-order right now. We brought them back. You can get them on uh, fingering weight or DK weight. Um, but they're great for spring because even though they were our Candy Hearts set that we came out with in February, they're beautiful spring colors and they have really pretty pink speckles on them. And um, uh, I just think that they would be great to use with this. So, and this is Sparkly Stellina. Who doesn't love that? So that's my next cast on. I also, since I finished my Bits and Bobs blanket, I wanna cast on another blanket, scrappy blanket. I wanna make the Battenberg, I think that's what it's called, the Battenberg crochet blanket. I'll put a picture up of it here. That is actually a, um, the Battenberg is a free pattern that you can download and uh, I'll put the name up of the designer here because I don't remember what her name is. Um, basically, you crochet a bunch of tiny squares and then you piece them all together. I saw Yana from Finished Knitting Stories. She's making one and I was just so inspired by hers and I wanted another scrappy blanket to make. So I'm going to cast that on. The yarn that I'm planning to use for the Battenberg blanket is uh, just going to be scraps. Um, so I want to make a square of each of the scraps, like leftover yarns that I have. And I also want to use my row one minis. This is all of them in all of their beautiful glory. I keep them in this basket and um, they already come like wound up for you, ready to go. And they always have the name of the dyer and the colorway name on them. Row one is a subscription that you can get. So I have accumulated quite a few minis over the last couple of years. I've used them in scrappy socks. I've used them as heels, toes, and cuffs on a project on socks. Uh, I've used them in blankets. I've used them in so many different things. So, um, I'm gonna use those to also to make the squares because I want to use those up as well. And I'm going to do the blanket where you hold the, um, where uh, the contrast color is just a bare yarn. I think that will look really pretty. When I finish the Memories of Paris cowl that I'm making now with the mold wine colorway, I want to make another one, but this time I want to use our Surrey base because you can use mohair or Surrey with it. You don't necessarily have to use mohair. So remember this pink uh, Surrey skein that I had left over from my, um, I, I dyed three of them and I only used two. So I'm going to use this at, to replace the mohair in that project. Um, I haven't decided on a main color yet. I'm thinking I may use one of our new spring colorways because it would go really well with this. Hint, hint. But uh, I am not sure yet. So when I have decided on the main color for that one, um, I will let you guys know. I did get two things in the mail that I wanted to show you. The first one is these uh, knit blockers from Knitter's Pride. They You use them to block your things that you have made. And this is what they look like inside. They're blocking pins. So 
when you're uh, laying your project out flat on your blocking mats, you stretch it out to where the dimensions that you want, and then you lay these pins down to hold it in place. You can use regular pins, but since these are bigger, it keeps it a little more secure while it's blocking. It kind of shows it here, like in use. It gives you some instructions on what to do with it. But um, I got these on Amazon. They're called the Knitter's Pride Rainbow Knit Blockers. They come in, um, you can get them in plain white as well. But I thought it was fun with the, all the rainbow colors to, to get those. I may get a second set. And if I do, I'll probably get the white. But I've been wanting these for a long time and I haven't been able to like properly block things. Um, and I feel like this will definitely help me do that. So that's my first acquisition. My second one is the Avery Lane Creations subscription that just came in the mail uh, yesterday or the day before. And um, I have not, I mean, I cut it open, but I have not even looked at this yet. So I thought it would be fun to open it on the episode. So Avery Lane Creations is a, her name is Nikki. She's a yarn dyer. Um, she has a subscription, a monthly subscription where you can get a skein of yarn and it's a mystery. You don't know what it's going to look like. And it comes with lots of fun goodies with it. So I think you can get Hers is cool because you can get, I know you can get DK and worsted weight. I'm not sure about fingering weight, but she has lots of options for your yarn base choice. And I get the DK weight because I don't have a lot of DK weight um, yarn in my stash. So that's why I chose the DK weight. So if you get this subscription and you have not looked at yours yet for technically this is for February, then look away. So it comes like this. And I can already see that I'm going to love this color. So this is the yarn for this month. It's called Green for Luck, Color for Sass. It is an 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, DK weight. And that's her logo. Look how beautiful. I love all those pops of bright green. I love it. So that is green for luck, color for sass. And then it came with some extras. It comes with a card that tells you all about that month. It says luck is all about hoping for a positive outcome and there is something so beautiful about hope. So the extras are the shamrock stitch marker from the hooking reader, um, a green project bag, and chocolates. Ooh. <laughs> So this is the stitch marker. And that is from thehookingreader.com. So cute. And it came with a green project bag, like a sort of nylon large project bag to use. And it came with chocolates, which one of them is totally smushed because of Florida. <laughs> but it came with these cute money chocolates. So that is a really fun subscription. Nikki is a super sweet person. Um, she has a podcast as well called something to do with yarn, yarn everywhere, I think it's called. I will link her below. I'll link her website. I will link her podcast. Um, and if you're looking for a fun subscription that um, you can get every month, she does lots of bright colors and just 
She's definitely my style of colors. Um, definitely uh, check out her subscription as well. All right, I think that is it for everything that I have to share with you. Thank you guys so much for watching and for liking and subscribing to this podcast. We appreciate each and every one of you and um, I just love doing this and I love sharing with you all and interacting with you and just having this fun way to communicate with you guys. So thank you so, so much for all of your support and I will see you again in two, well, I'll see you next week for a special spring preview. And then in two weeks, I'll do another regular episode. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget about those pre-orders that are available right now for a few more days. And I will see you guys again next week. Thanks so much. Happy knitting. Bye.